Hi, I recently ran across a comment in one of my videos that ran parallel to some of the thoughts I've been having about the infamous and uh, somewhat beaten to death in the wallet. Uh, beaten to death both by me and my videos, because I have to talk about it so often, and by uh, people employing it. But uh, let me start the video off by uh, simply quoting the gentleman, and I think he's uh, spot on with what he says. I quote, his name is, uh, so I give credit to him, Lander, Lander Zoo. If Nuwalt is true, and say 10% of women are not like most women, it's no consolation, because 100% of men are going to be competing for that 10% of women who are not like the vast majority of women. That 10% will perceive their value above the 90% of horrible women and will up their asking price. These 10% of women will only date the top 10% of men brackets based on wealth, power, fame, attractiveness, and brackets, and will jump ship as soon as a richer and better looking guy takes an interest, a Walt. Now, uh, there is a, yeah, there are some parallels to what I've been thinking recently. But what is this guy saying? Um, I, I think 90% is generous, but let, let's stick with the 90% number. Let's assume that 90% of women are like that, 10% are not. What he's saying, and what I would like to say, is that you're going to have virtually 100% of men, maybe 99% of men, striving for uh, that 10% of women. So from the start, from the get-go, vastly, vastly outnumbered. Then uh, you're going to have the very harmful uh, inter-male dominance hierarchy competition take place in which we crawl o over each other's corpses, if need be, in an effort to acquire female reproductive resources. Because we perceive these women as 10% to be, well, not like that. Now let me just add in the middle of this the caveat that uh, even if we're generous and say that 10% of women aren't like that, it's safe to say that detecting uh, amongst the, in, in the masses, to use my uh, somewhat infamous microbacteria in a haystack analogy, detecting what may or may not be a woman who's not like that is not impossible. So that only adds to the difficulty level involved here. But um, that's right. So you'll have an incredibly large pool of men striving for an incredibly small pool of women, which will up women's value, uh, those women's uh, particular value perceived or otherwise. And you will essentially end up with a lot of men failing and falling flat on their face. Um, some, in an effort uh, to, when having actually spied such a female, um, just being, uh, being priced out of, the, out of the market essentially at the outset, that there will be many of those, and we'll get to that in a second, but also the legions and legions of men who fall for uh, the 90%. Um, because it's, it's, it's well disguised, as it were. And so you'll have a lot of men jumping after women who do not, who are in fact not part of the so-called 10%, but part of the 90%, because they, they misperceive things, and they, uh, they fell for a trap, and they'll end up falling on their face hard. Um, and we can put the blame on men as much as we want. At the end of the day, uh, I'm not going to do that. If, if, if a man is honest, has good intentions... Um, I, I refuse, and, and as a forthright human being, I, I simply refuse to place fault at his feet um, because he acted according to, to an, with an, in a manner uh, with integrity, uh, honor, honesty, and uh, simply because he was deceived. Um, there's something screwy about the whole system, it should be said, when you, you have to constantly be on the lookout for, for deception. Uh, on the part of uh, the other gender. But anyway, so it is very, very true that these 10% of women, they'll start looking at their own uh, values being, well, much more valuable than it actually is. Um, now, I, I'd like to make a little analogy here. It's not perfect, but uh, let's say that automobiles uh, were the equivalent of, of women in this case. 
and they were just as desired as women were. You know, they were seen essentially as some basic element to life. I mean, you can't live without them, supposedly. But let's assume, just like here, that uh, the vast majority of automobiles were it's out of the price, uh, pri out of the price range of the vast majority of men. Let's say a, a, a genuinely good car cost uh, at least a million dollars. At least most men could not afford that, um, and so, or maybe ten million. Who knows with inflation these days? And so you'll have a lot of men uh, try uh, work either working their way towards acquiring that that kind of car. The, the quality car that actually works. But what you also have on the market, and what we have in the so-called dating market, uh, is the kind of a phenomenon where you see a lot of imposters, you know, fakes, uh, cheap imitations. You'll probably, in, in such a society where the car is elevated, to say, to female status, you'd probably get a lot of so-called cheaper versions that men could afford, men uh, who would normally be priced out of the top end car automobile market would uh, would be buying buying pieces of crap that were sold as in fact quality because even you're going to sell sell a, a product that is much cheaper you're certainly not going to say it's a cheap piece of shit you're going to say oh, it's just as good as the other stuff it's just more more affordable um, and so you'll have a lot of and these are and I, the analogy here is the men uh, dating looking searching within the masses of women and uh, basically looking for the cheap uh, car product, uh, it's not the same thing. Um, and then, of course, uh, you'll have men, as I said, just said, who will spend all their money, their time, their energy, saving up or what have you, in the effort to get the, that most expensive automobile. That That's what they'll do. And they'll probably fail in the end because there are other men with even much, much more money who can actually are not priced out of that market and will get it. Furthermore, what all of this says about female character <clears throat> as a rule is that if indeed it's the case that these 10% <clears throat> of women uh, will per inherently perceive their value or naturally perceive their value as, uh, as going up because of their so-called rarity, if they choose to associate women with, with men who are in the dominance hierarchy on the top end in terms of power, wealth, and what have you, then, uh, then it says a lot about female character. Um, so I'm, I'm reluctant to use the phrase AWALT, but uh, just because I, I don't like being purely categorical or entirely categorical about everything. But there's, there seems to be a lot of evidence for that, for AWOLF as opposed to... <laughs> well, there, there doesn't seem to be a lot of evidence for Nwalt, and there does seem to be a lot of evidence for AWOLF. But to summarize, uh, let's look at the situation. Um, you have a, a large, large pool of men striving for a very very small pool of women locked uh, locked in competition with each other and some men have said this is a good thing that we should compete against each other for the sake of women uh, you know I'm not going to address that in this video but I don't think it's a good thing and um, <clears throat> yeah and then you'll have people falling by the wayside men falling by the wayside because they can't acquire that 10% um, there will be cheap imitation automobiles, i.e. women, uh, most of them, 90% of them, and I, I do think these numbers are generous, that will uh, seem okay and then will fall for it, but uh, in fact, not okay at all. So uh, it is a bit of a conundrum and a problem, but this is in, in essence what Nawalt really entails. And people who use it and advocate it are advocating more male male competition that will result in almost certain failure. And it's not good for men, and it's not healthy, and it's not sound advice.